Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be taking this photo and giving it the grunge effect so it looks just like that. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and, of course, don't forget to click on share and share with your friends through social media. Also, hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss out on any videos in the future. And to learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements, look for my complete training courses and you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. There's no one specific way to apply a grunge look onto a photograph, but there are some general things. Probably adding in some texture like we have in the background in here to give it more of a dirty look, adding in some grain effect, increasing the contrast on the picture, maybe bringing in or blending our colors a bit better. There's a few of these things that tend to lead to this grunge look, which is used quite a bit on movie posters and album covers, things like that. It's a real interesting look or effect and has a lot of emotion into a picture. Let's go ahead and we'll do this one here. We'll be starting off with this picture just like that and then through a series of steps giving it this grungy effect. Let me just close this one down. There we go. And here is the original image right there. We'll also be working with this background image here as a texture image. We'll be using that just a little bit later. The first thing you want to do is to fix your composition by cropping into your picture. Now all I really want here is the girl's face and some of the background walls. So we'll crop in on that. But let's set the zoom here to fit screen so you can see the whole picture. There it is. Let's now come down to the crop tool. I have mine set at 8 by 10, 8 by 10 crop. Then just come in here, just do a little rectangle like that. This is an 8 by 10 rectangle. You can now grab the corners and move this around to get just the right composition for the picture. Somewhere around in here I think looks pretty good. So have a little bit of the background, maybe just a little bit larger. There we go. So this nice 8 by 10 format on this and choose OK. There's our basic crop for the picture. I'm going to zoom back out again so this thing fits on screen. There's the whole picture. OK, so we've cropped into the image. The next thing I always do at this point is I want to take this background here and make a duplicate of that. We will be messing around with the image, so I want to have a safety just in case. We'll actually be needing this in a little later step as we go, so make sure we have that thing saved. Now on the background layer here, this is going to be our portrait layer. I'm just going to rename this portrait. There we go, portrait. And we'll have a black and white layer as well, so that'll be differentiating those two as we talk about this. Okay, let's go ahead now and take this layer and let's copy it up here. And this is going to be the black and white layer. I'll just call it B and W. And let's pull that underneath the portrait layer. So there's a black and white under the portrait. We can now hide the portrait layer and I'll do our conversion on the black and white layer. And for that, let's go up to Enhance, come down to Convert to Black and White. And you have several options in here, Infrared, Newspaper, Portraits, Scenic. I'm going to go for the Urban Snapshots, just a little more contrast. I'm not going to change anything down here on the Intensity, just a basic Urban Snapshots adjustment and choose OK. We can adjust our values in the next step. So here's our black and white. Now this is only being used for the background, so don't worry about the girl in here. We're only concerned with the background bricks right back there. Right now they're a little bit kind of flat looking. So we want to increase the contrast on those bricks. And we'll do that with an adjustment layer. Go up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and I'll use Levels. Now where it says use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask, make sure that's checked. That will then apply that layer only to the layer just beneath, which is the black and white layer. Now in here, these are the ranges of all of the values in the picture. There's not a whole lot of white as you can see here, and we're not really getting pure blacks over there, which means that it's not a real crisp image. It's not going from pure black to pure white. So we can bring the left side up. That darkens down the blacks, actually pushes some of the gray tones into the black value. Now again, don't look at the girl, only look at the background bricks in here. And for this, we're going to set the black point at 50. So we've 
really moved the blacks way up into the grays, giving us some nice darks in those black bricks. Same thing with the white. I want to increase the contrast and bring some pure whites in there. So I'll pull the right side slider and that just kind of slides it. This way it increases the contrast. The closer these two are together, the more contrasty your picture. Now for this I'm using a setting of 230. There we go. The middle control allows you to control or adjust the overall value in here. I can go lighter or darker within that contrast range. In this one I want just a little bit darker, so I'm going to set that at 0.82, so 0.82. Again, pay attention to the bricks back here and don't worry about the girl on the right hand side. That looks good for the bricks. Has some nice contrast, some nice darks, so there's good separation here now. So that adds a bit more of an effect. Okay, we'll go ahead and close that down. So we've taken care of our black and white brick layer. We're now ready to bring our color portrait back into the image. Let's just go ahead and show that. At this point, obviously, we want that black and white background for the bricks. We don't want to have that showing in here. So let's create a layer mask and mask out just the girl on this layer so we'll then see the bricks in behind from the black and white layer. So for that, let's go to the portrait layer. Click on the layer mask button. Here we go. Layer mask comes in as white. This is show all. So if I paint black on the layer mask, that will hide parts of this picture and show what's underneath, which of course is that black and white. So go to the paintbrush and we have black as our foreground color. I have my brush set on a soft edge brush at 150 pixels. The way to do that is just to grab any soft brush in here. It doesn't matter what you want to grab. Just go ahead and click on that. There's your soft edge and then type in 150 which is just a nice size. You can see there's the brush size right there. It's just a nice easy size for this. Now as I paint on that layer mask with the black paint you can see how there it is. There's the black on that. It's creating a hole in the color picture and showing us the black and white in behind. Now because of the soft brush I can come in right along the edge of our figure. It doesn't matter if you go a little bit onto the edge that's fine. If, if she goes just a touch black and white on that edge that is not going to hurt. Actually it will improve the look just a little bit. So just go right around the image here and just overlapping ever so slightly onto her picture. So we're now seeing the black and white background in behind there and then using the papers just fill in the rest of that then just continue painting around and blocking out that color part of the bricks leaving us that nice contrasty black and white area. There we go and that looks good. Okay once that's done we now have our two color areas separated the color for the girl and the black and white for the background. The next step is to lower the saturation of our colors on the portrait layer. So double click over here so you're on the image side of that layer and then we're going to be doing an adjustment layer on this. So layer, adjustment layer, hue, and saturation. Saturation is what we care about. Again where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, check that and choose OK and then bring down the saturation on that. You see here there's no saturation, there's full saturation. I just want to bring it down a bit so it's not quite as strong. And I'll set this at oh about four, negative 45, negative 46 in there. So it's just a lower saturation level on that. And that helps to blend her in with the background so they're a little closer together. We'll be adding in color to the background as a final step on this whole process. Now let's adjust the contrast values in here or the levels of this. Again another adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer and levels. Again check that checkbox right there. Choose OK. And we want to bring our blacks into the black and our whites into the white. So let's pull the left side up. That darkens down the darks. Now bring it just a little ways up into the blacks. So about 23 on this picture. On the right side, let's bring our whites up. Again, just pull that in just a little ways. About, oh, 30, 230, 231 in there somewhere. Increases the white. So I can show and hide that here. So you can see how that just adds in contrast to the image. 
making it a bit more striking looking. So we've adjusted our contrast. We can then do a little tweak here on the values as well. If I go to the right, it darkens it down. On the midtones, left lightens it up. I want it to just be just a little bit darker, about 0.90 on that. So we've improved the contrast look. Let's go ahead and show and hide that. There it is. So just improving our contrast. Okay. So far, so good. We're getting things blended together nicely on this. I now want to really punch the detail and the highlights in this image, most little, little details to help with that grunge effect. We'll do that with a special trick here. Let's come back down to our original background layer. As I said before, we'll be using this again. Take this background layer, drag it up to a new layer button, just like that, and then drag that clear to the top of the stack. And then you can hide that background again. We'll now apply a special filter onto this layer. Go up to Filter, come down to Other, and High Pass. This does this really kind of weird thing like this. This actually allows you to pull out detail and can be used as a sharpening filter, which is how we're using it this time. I have my radius set at 1, one little 1 1.0. Choose OK, and you get this kind of gray thing. We now need to blend this into everything else. Go up to our blend modes and come down to vivid light. And that really brings up those real thin details. Let me just show and hide that. You see, really in the hair in there, we're just kind of punching those hairs so they're really standing out. And a little bit on the zipper down there as well. So it's a little detail, but it adds to that kind of stark realism that you get with this grungy effect. So far, so good. Let's now go back to work on the background. Let's go back to the Move tool here. And let's come back down to the background layer right there. Now click on the layer just above that. That's the Levels layer. This is part of that set, the background and the Levels adjustment for that background. So click on that Levels layer and bring up the other picture. Just bring it up right here. There we go. And these come in as a floating window. I'll just take that background layer, drag it onto my picture, and there we go. It just copies it over that easy as long as it's a floating window. Now, this is just about what we want, but take the corners, it's a little bit too small, take your corners here and then drag this out until it covers the whole picture. The specific size doesn't really matter in here as long as it's covering the whole picture. We're just using the texture on this and then choose OK. Now obviously we need to see our nice black and white bricks from behind, so we need to blend this picture into the brick picture underneath. And we'll do that with a blend mode. Back to our blend modes here, come down to soft light, and that blends that texture. You see the nice little texture now showing in there. If I show and hide that texture layer, see how much that adds into the picture. It really puts in a lot of texture on that one. A lot of grain effect and a lot of texture effect. Let's go back to the black and white layer, and we'll do one more little trick on this layer as well. Just want to darken down the corners, especially these two corners, top and bottom, and we'll do that with a filter and correct camera distortion. One of the options in here is this box here where it says vignette. The top slider says lighten and darken. This will lighten or darken down the corners. So push that clear to the left and that gives you that nice kind of darkening in the corner in there and then choose OK. So there's that vignetting effect. OK, that gets the background just about set, or so just about where we want to have that on our background. And this leaves us with two problems to fix. One is we need to have a lot of grain effect in the background and, and no grain effect on the person. We need to fix that so that the grain is similar and kind of blends the two together. And also we have color in the foreground and no color in the background. I want to fix that as well as kind of merge these together again. So let's first handle that grain. Go up here to the portrait layer. Now I'll be making a filter adjustment on the layer itself, so I just want to copy this one out and save it just in case. Just go ahead and copy and save that, and then hide the original right there. We're working on the portrait copy. That's in case you don't like how this filter looks, you can go back and you can change it again just by deleting that one and making another copy. Okay, so we're on our portrait layer on the image side. Go up to Filter, come down to Noise, and we'll add noise. Right there, you can see that, that grain effect in here now on the image. Let's go ahead and show or hide that preview. You can mostly see it in the face right in here. 
and that brings in grain into the picture which helps to blend this with the background grain of the photo. Now we're only doing this on the image side, we're not touching the grain back there. It just helps to bring those two together texture wise. Okay, they're now blended together. The last thing we need to do is to blend our colors all together so we have a nice color image. It doesn't look like we're doing a black and white with a color on top. I want it to appear as if it's one color image. And we'll do that by adding in one more adjustment layer. Go up to the very top up here where it says background copy and layer. Come down to adjustment layer. This time we'll be doing a gradient map right there. Now don't check that checkbox. I want this applying to everything on the in our stack here. Go ahead and choose OK. Now it comes up with the black and white as the first layer. You might actually like that one. It's real stark black and white look. But in this case, let's go here to this violet to orange. You have a lot of different options on this. You can even choose your own colors if you want to. But we'll just go with the cool to warm on this violet to orange. Close that down. Choose OK. Now obviously this is way too strong. I don't want to have this effect. So we need to modify this layer to blend that in with everything else that we've done. So first, let's bring our opacity down on this. I'm going to bring the opacity down to 60%, but it still gives us this monochromatic effect. So to fix that, let's change the blend mode and then blend this layer in with everything else underneath. And we'll do that with our blend modes and soft light. And that just blends that in. And there we go. The main thing you'll be seeing here is a little more contrast in the face, but mostly we're now seeing color in the background. And it's the same color range we had in the foreground. So we have our a little bit of violets in the darks and a little bit of orange in the lights. Same things we have in here. And it blends the background now into our picture. Let's just go ahead and show and hide that. You can see there, there's a bit more color kind of orangey color in the figure, but also brings in a lot of color to the background and blends those two together. And there you go, that's it. So once you go through this once or twice, it's pretty easy and will apply to almost any photograph. If you have more contrast in your picture, it tends to work better than on a, a low contrast image. So having you know, nice shadows and stuff in your picture will help on this. But real fun, interesting look. Let's go ahead and see how this looks. I'm gonna bring this up in size here a bit. We'll zoom in. There we go, a little bit larger. And let's go back to our background there. I'll, I'll copy this up to a new layer, just like that. Put this on the top of the stack. There it is, so there's the original. And there's our grunge effect applied to that. Taking an interesting picture, but giving it a lot more emotion and style by applying this grunge effect. Don't forget to check out my training courses for Photoshop Elements. And again, the link is right down there in the description. And I'll also make sure that you share this video with your friends on social media. Just click share right below the video. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.